What up, tribe? It's your girl, Raji, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast, The Kush Concierge, Something for the People, where the evolved hustlers come to learn more about root work, conjure, tarot, astrology, culture, and a little bit of everything in between. Today is Tuesday. It is October the 1st, and being that it's the first of the month, I hope you guys got a chance to somewhat cleanse and renew your space for the next 31 days ahead of us. Now, this is a very important set of days and I kind of started to explain this to y'all yesterday. So today being the first is the eve of the new moon in Libra as well as the solar eclipse tomorrow And like I said, we've got that first of the month energy coming through. So energetically, 1122 on the timestamp, energetically, we are being guided to start fresh, create and manifest a more balanced, harmonious life that really appeals to us. I feel like that's what that kind of that download was giving me right now. Tuesdays is all about ambition, success, um, passion. It is a day where, you know, sometimes your ops will try to come together, usually during a Mars hour or something of that nature to do negative things towards you. But if you have made protection work a part of your daily hygiene, spiritual hygiene, that is, you should not be having to deal with a array of spiritual attacks um, in this particular moment. Now, Tuesdays is a great day to focus on, you know, your own intentions as well as intentions of your your peers and people around you. So if you're having to go out into the world and deal with folks, then you want to make sure that you're not leaning into energy that is really there to stifle you and hold you back, especially during a time like now. Uh, with it being Mars ruled, you'll find a lot of people focusing in on left-hand work on Tuesdays and during Mars hour. Um, now, if you're new here, you know, I am all about the planetary hours in the days of the week um, because that is the very essence in which this system that we have to abide by every single day is built on. And even though we may desire to tap back into our like indigenous ways and um, our, you know, very core of who we are, we still have to kind of maneuver with the machine just a little bit because i mean greek culture and roman culture is really what the foundation of where where we stand you know is built on it's like egyptian and greek and like (laughs) going through the days of the week going through the hours of the day it all has something to do so i feel like you should be working on like transmuting that energy for your highest good at the end of the day so why not work with the planetary hours and approach the gods and the goddesses, you know, and your guides who are very acclimated with those hours. Um, And if you wanted to look at it, because as I'm doing um, the guide outline for uh, Root Work and Conjure, the intro, which is going to be a self-paced class for you guys to learn more, like when you start at the foundation of the very thing, like with nature and elements, all of that ties into the four corners. And that's what, you know, indigenous cultures built off of nature. Um, everything has a element to it. Root work and conjure broken down to its simplest form is elements. And that can be tied into like the planetary days, the planetary hours. So, you know, you might be focusing on um, entering in with specific herbs, specific uh, conduits, you know. So, the shit get deep. So, you know, I just want you guys to know that as you get deeper into your practice, even if it's just for your own personal work, to have the best outcome you know you need to know how these things work 
So, yeah, that's why I be telling y'all if you're new here. If you OG, you notice how I do. So, you know, take notes where needed. But, yeah, today is a good day to activate protective things. Um, if you tapping in and you like, well, why is today a good day to activate protective things? Because Mars is the god of war. Mars is about passion. Mars is about new beginnings. Mars is about forging ahead. So what would you want to do? I like to use Tuesdays as a strategy day. And I like to say, like, don't be arguing with nobody and lowering your frequency, especially since we finna walk through this portal. You know, you're probably going, and when I say portal, this time space of the solar eclipse and Libra for justice and battle, balancing things out. So you probably gonna have a lot of energies trying to pull you back into that previous timeline. And I'm telling y'all right now, do not fucking fall for it. <laughs> do not fall for it, baby, because you on your way. Now, this season we will be tapping into as we um in addition to like the evolved hustler sessions which a lot of things are now going to be in terms of classes and workshops are going to be on the website under like programs where some of them are self-paced some of them you will have a specific amount of time to complete the class because i will be interacting with you all personally now with that being said, right now we are focusing in on what I like to call, and I kind of toyed around with it last season, Lilith's Interlude. October is when the physical and the spiritual realm is very, very close and thin. If you are a spiritual person, it already is for you. Think of it almost like enhanced energy. So no matter which realm of this you're practicing, be it voodoo, be it hoodoo, be it traditional, like pagan, witchcraft, wicca, whatever it is you do, right? Um, some like indigenous uh root work and conjure, like Whatever it is you practice at some realm, everybody knows October is the time when the veil is like super duper thin. Everybody has their own like things that they do, you know, and um, things that they follow. But the core of it is tapping in ancestor work. Um, October is very much giving honoring your spirit team and your guides so that you can move through the timeline, making sure you're planting proper seeds for the harvest. Um, because traditionally in history, the harvest would end around the 31st. So you've had about two times or so to review and tap in so that you get ready to make this like this shift, right? So just, you know, note that you know put a pin in that sheet because you're gonna need it moving forward but yeah so i'm we're gonna be working a lot more with lilith's interlude and what was funny about it and i said like funny i mean like ironic when i got ready because at first it was just gonna be like a high shadow series and you know like divine film like shadow work then I start thinking about like all of the type issues or challenges that we face um, in regards to our process. So there will be um, probably um, over the course of time, you know, obviously everything's not going to come all out at once. But there will be over the course of time different Lilith's interludes. Um, we're going to have a, and just to kind of give y'all like a little idea we're going to have one called Family Ties um, Shadow Work Series. We're going to have a Shadow Work Series, uh, Basic High Shadow. And I want to make it seem like it's nothing. But that's going to be like the build up. And then we'll break it down into like select workshops. Um, we're going to have one, Lilith's Interlude, It's a Man's World. And that's just uh, the feminine sovereignty and working with kind of reclaiming ourselves from the patriarchy we're also going to have one called loving the wild women which is going to be where couples learn how to you know you can have your partner learn more about how to I don't want to say handle of of well, the wild woman archetype, but because I don't want to make sense, you can be handled. But how you can coexist, how you can align, how you can honor that that wild woman archetype um, within your relationships. So 
we're gonna have one um, for moms we're gonna it's gonna be called dear mama and that's just healing the mother child bond and embracing spiritual growth we will also be having one called what about your friends as well and that's gonna be more to the tune of building um a tribe within the feminine culture and you know breaking down those blockages, et cetera. So, yeah, I, I started doing that shit, and I was like, damn, like, it is a lot of little things. Like, we need to be addressing and dealing with this, this like, harvest and, you know, winter season, you know, things we want to move through. So, first things the first, Lilith's interlude, high shadow. And um, today, um, if you don't know about Lilith, okay, first and furthermost, <laughs> Lilith is to Lilith is to me well first of all she's traditionally known as Adam's wife well first wife um as I did my research within Greek and um Egyptian pantheons first of all I feel like Lilith is the Greek version of Neth which is the woman that was built from clay came from the earth when I started to do um, more research into indigenous cultures it is also said that the indigenous feel like we came from the earth like we came up out of the earth okay so Lilith is considered to be the first woman so the story goes that she didn't want to be hearing no do what did I say you know not as I do do as you told like she defied the patriarchy in a sense she defied the masculine energy of adam like she questioned um and so when you see we all have a lilith placement in our chart um but hold on let me just i'm getting ahead of myself getting ahead of myself um so yeah Lilith is, let me go to my Lilith notes, and I'm just going to briefly discuss, because like I said, this is going to be definitely a workshop, but I just kind of want to get y'all a rundown of where we're going with these. So you'll have some people classifying Lilith as a dark demoness, a dark feminine, when in reality, Lilith is the part of us that is the wild woman that is untamed, that does not want to be placed in a box. And just like Medusa, just like fucking who else in history think of all the gods and the goddesses well the goddesses who are the archetypes who they like would kind of try to place in this one space you know prostitution or um, even Mary Magdalene had the aspect of being like the prostitute and etc. So Lilith kind of like defies that. Like if you want to go deeper, you think about images like Hecate or um um essences of Oshun. You know, all of these things play back to the facing and dealing with your divine feminine. Now, the reason we are tapping into Lilith is because Lilith is to be considered like the first actual physical woman. I would say Neth, but I mean, most people to me know her as Lilith, so we just gonna roll with Lilith. <laughs> we gonna roll with Lilith, man. Um, I had made mention on like my tribe talk on TikTok that I was like slowly discovering that Lilith was not who they made her out to be. And I want to just say like they, some cultures exclusively place her as like this dark energy. Then you got others that's where it's like a divine feminine. I feel like it's a duality and I feel like that's a duality that represents women in themselves. Like you can, we always talk about like learning how to dance with your shadow, but not letting it lead. And so I feel like because they were like, oh, this is an energy that is non-obeying. They don't listen. They don't do, you know what I'm saying? So mm -mm, they want to demonize that. Because <sighs> like how y'all made Mary Magdalene a prostitute? You know what I'm saying? Like you just, I don't know. Like it, it felt like, and then when I look her up, um, when I was like looking her up on social media and just like kind of perusing around. 
I didn't like the fact that Lilith was portrayed as like this horn dark figure, like playing into the concept of like, you know, how they like to have Medusa with the snakes. But then you have some concepts of saying Medusa really had locks. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like one of those types of vibes. And I'm like, why are there no more interpretations of Lilith? Why is she only being shown one way? Because even when you go into people who write books about her, they'll be like, okay, you can access Lilith from two spaces. From a divine feminine goddess space, you can also assess her from a darker, like, you know, demonic type energy space. And I'm like, okay so if that's the case then why is only one realm of her being portrayed because clearly even the people that's writing the books like they're not putting this shit on social media where you can like see it but like if you go like actually pick up a book and read about her they'll tell you that they'll say that's how they view and there are even different processes about how to approach her for like you know more left-hand work and processes for approaching her and more like you know um like receiving better like work i don't know how i'm saying but <laughs> you feel me you feel where i'm coming from um but she's very multifaceted now her roots are in ancient mesotopian um jewish christian and islamic traditions like i said egyptian wise when i went up the egyptian family tree she translated to neth n-e-i-t-h because that's who was the first human according to Egyptian pantheon if you want to look at that um so she's been kind of placed into this dark feminine archetype and it's going to be more like tapping into your independence your sexuality in rebelling against any patriarchal control so that's that's where it is um when it comes to the essence of Lilith it was so funny because um I had like a whole like God and he really played me with this shit. And I feel like it's because it's not true. <laughs> like and energetically she was like um so if you think of concepts of like elevated ancestors, Lilith would be like the very first ancestor that we've ever had as women. So think of it like that. Um, Mesa, what's ironic about, and when you think of that, right, in terms of Egypt, in terms of Africa, like, Mesotopian is, like, right on that little cut between, um, what is it, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and, like, the edge of, like, East Africa, like, the upper parts of Egypt, like, they all, like, right there together, if you look on the map, if you go and you start to research the placements so that's why i feel like you know everybody kind of has their version of what that might look like in terms of lore and location and culture right um so yeah so over time she has evolved but like i said when you see people certain groups talking about her it just is a very like like this is what Lilith is and you don't see shit else so my goal over this time span is to recreate that refine that other side okay so obviously we have to have balance so where's the other side of Lilith why is nobody else talking about this other side of this person which is written about in books why are we only leaning into that so yeah um in your chart you will notice i don't know do everybody have a black moon lilith in your astrological chart you have an area um for it which is called lilith and lilith as y'all know y'all hear me mentioning lilith when i do the daily like um almanacs or whatever and lilith is your shadow work your the things you are maybe ashamed about or have a hard time expressing or facing in life um or conquering um it could be childhood trauma so Lilith is very important in our natal chart in our day-to-day -day charts as well um let me see so that's why I feel like she just need to be handled in a different type of way 
more multifaceted, if you will, you know, definitely honoring the dark, but also having that balance and showing you how to do that shadow work so you can come out on the other side, you know, because you need that shadow. And again, that's something I do talk to y'all about quite a bit. Um, so your Lilith placement, it definitely is going to be more revealing about your relationship with yourself, power, again, sexuality, freedom, and repressed emotions. Now, as a dark feminine archetype, she is unapologetic, she's authentic, and she's willing to face these shadows. So do y'all see why Lilith is so important um, in your charts? Even if you're a guy, I feel like, do guys, I don't even know, do y'all have Lilith placements? Because we are both masculine and feminine energies, so I think it'd be interesting to see men um, work with it, even though, again, my core audience is mostly women, but still, you know, that'd be interesting. So, now, us doing shadow work as a collective uh, is going to be the process of us confronting and integrating the hidden, suppressed, or wounded parts of ourselves. So, y'all seen when I was telling y'all about the different parts, I was, like, breaking down how these workshops were going to be over time. And they'll be, like, little workshops where you can join in where it most fits you. I might, like, put it all as, like, a package I don't know. We'll see. I know by the end of the day how I'm going to do that. I literally just started the outlines and was like, hmm, this is important. This is very, very important. <laughs> you know, that's how I started to feel. Um, So it's very essential for us to do this healing work. The world is changing. The world is shifting. And as we move along... Honoring your authenticity and stepping into yourself um, is going to help you in your evolution as a hustler, your evolution as a woman, as a mother, as a daughter, you know, as a friend, as a lover, like all of those things play a part, right? Um, so as we, we, we work with this Lilith energy, we'll talk about her different offerings and we'll talk about her process and this will be able to help you approach Lilith as a guide so that you'll be able to be able to face, face any uncomfortable truths, embracing your wild nature and reclaiming your power overall. Now, there is a need for us to tap into those emotions because you have to validate them. You can't just push them down inside of you and walk away. That's how we have blow ups, eleven forty four on the timestamp. That's how things like naturally go like to the fucking left in our lives because we've suppressed and then one day you just blow the fuck up and go completely left because you haven't dealt with those issues. Or maybe you don't blow up. Maybe you regress further in, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the case might be. It's no bueno, you know, so we want to reclaim any repressed power. Um, so we'll be definitely working with those practices to find balance and harmony, um, reclaiming our autonomy, our independence. Lilith is going to be more so as a mirror to confront these areas, maybe where you've been people pleasing, sacrificing your own needs and rejecting your true desires in life, right? So we'll be doing different little rituals over the time span. Um, I'll be, we'll be doing journal prompts, herbs, candle work, um, and just all over approaching Lilith as a guide outside of traditionally what she is like portrayed as like because I don't like it like I don't like the fact like when we look her up like what and uh, I ain't even gonna go there okay I'm gonna be quiet that's not that's that's a, a rant for another day <laughs> she's in different flavors okay period not just one I'm just gonna say that so Divine feminine healing is going to be looking like reconnecting with your intuition, your creativity, and your emotional depth. You're going to be focusing more on balancing and nurturing these aspects of yourself, this wild woman nature, this fierceness. So at first, and I haven't finished it yet, Run women who run with wolves, I have not finished that shit yet. And I'm ashamed to say I haven't finished it yet. And do y'all know I had the nerve to sign up for that um, because I needed it for these workshops we finna be doing um, and doing root work and stuff. I needed certain books. But I had the nerve to start reading other books. <laughs> 
it, but I am I'm almost done with it. But reading, um, you need to read that book if you haven't. Women who run with wolves, it's definitely a help, and I probably will be like working with that concept as well um we're gonna be reading some Dora Neale Hurston books we're gonna be just tapping all the way the fuck in like deep deep and if you are into the woo woo we will be definitely um working with the Agrippa like we are getting down with the getting down this season okay now as you evolve um into you know be from I you know I always say don't make your identity being a survivor so as you evolve beyond doing your shadow work you will use this energy to have a ongoing evolution um and a deeper connection with yourself at your core so when you are faced with those moments in life you can tap in and do what you need to do your instincts you know never selling yourself short shit like that so, you know, first things first, find where Lilith is in your chart, find if it's in a specific house, find what zodiac sign your Lilith is in, okay? There you will start to work with the element of Lilith in your journey everybody got some you know some of us might have the same Lilith, some of us don't. everybody got a different Lilith placement in their chart, okay, so. Find that Lilith placement and look at those characteristics of that zodiac sign. Look what house it's in because the house is going to tell you what area of your life you're working on that energy where that is going to be most focused um, over time. Okay, so, you know, drop in the comments. Tell me, you know where it is for you, you know, email me, reach out to me if you don't feel comfortable in the comments. So, you know, if you need any guidance or help with that, I'll be more than happy to walk you through that process. Um, what else? So, yeah, we'll be definitely working, um, creating symbolisms. We'll be meditating. Um, it's going to be amazing. I'm so excited. But first things first, find out where she is in your chart. Find out what the sign is and what house it's in and then gather those characteristics and we're going to work from there so don't don't jump too deep i would say learn more about her history and you know ugh, like the deep deep history oh my god you can tell it's all written by men oh my god so it's so fucking boring i'm not even gonna hold y'all that shit's so boring but i but i'm reading it but it's boring as hell like you could tell it's mostly written by men i think i seen one lady and i'm talking about in like history not like current like i like to go back back so i went back and most of that literature is written by men it's it's quite um discouraging but hey leaves room for us to be able to set the record straight so i don't mind it all um so yeah your daily practices um moving with lilith you might want to put lilith on um, make an altar for her a candle maybe um depending on what you need her for you feel me you might need her for you know you know help protection work obviously those are going to be black or red candles if you are needing her for love or goddess work you're going to be doing pinks purples um and obviously white is a catch-all Again, this is going to be broken down like deeper in the workshop. Now, um, this is going to be a moment now because a lot of us, like your Lilith is where your shame is, you know? Um, but once you conquer that shit, nobody can hold nothing over your head. Nobody can stop you. So dealing with Lilith and all those aspects is really what's going to, you know, help us. So, yeah, I would definitely encourage y'all to join the workshops um i'll be blogging about it i'll be doing talking about it vlogging as we go through this process but like i said october is the month baby october is the month i have a lot of other traditional like workshops obviously that we're doing like i said the root working conjure um the evolved hustler i probably for the ones that are paced not self-paced 
I will be taking only 13 people per session, okay? Um, Because I want to be able to focus and work with you guys without it getting, like, too overwhelming for me, okay? Now, let's look at what's going on today. Um, I'm probably going to light another. Let light another incense, baby. If you love me, send me incense, darling. I have an Amazon wish list. Team, which I need to update. Period point blank. Okay. But how y'all feel about it? Let me know. Like, I think it's needed. I think it's needed. I I, I truly do. Like, because at first I was like, oh, we're just going to do a little traditional shadow work. And then Spirit was like, no. The people need more. We need more healing. So I was like, all right, let's see where we go from here. Now, today, again, we're dealing with this Mars energy. We get the eve of the new moon. Now, in my Evolve Hustler ego, I working. I worked on the new moon um, page, and I put my intentions. Also, there was an amazing spread for the new moon energy. So, um, I might go live later. Ain't no might. I am going to go live later. And I'm going to, like, do pulls. But it's like a three-card spread. And I'll, you know, tap in a little bit with that today. Uh, what you need to know during the new moon. Like, certain questions or whatever. But in the e guide, like, I did write down my, like, vision. I brainstormed what my intentions were, things that I noticed from the lunar eclipse in Pisces. Um, and I kind of just, like, walked myself through that. So I would definitely, even if you don't have a book and you just journal, right, um, you need to be focused on knowing the fact that the new moon is a time for new beginnings, intention setting, and planting seeds in which you desire. It is in Libra. So we are focusing on, yes, you focus on our relationship with others, but we start with ourselves, okay? So you're building a new relationship with yourself and we're starting confirmation. We're starting with our girl Lilith. We're starting with the divine feminine, um, you know, in all aspects. So right now that infant energy is moving in Virgo, right? So you're organizing, you're analyzing, you're releasing, you're removing, you're doing all things Virgo, okay? <laughs> all things Virgo. Hold up. I don't know why I just said Virgo. Virgos, don't get mad at me. That's my sister saying. But yeah, so even if you don't have like this guide, you can still journal and put like brainstorming your intentions for the new moon. And um, when you do this, speak as if it's already happened. Don't talk about it like you're wishing for it. Like make a bold statement like I am and, you know, have, you know, there are certain statements and I have that in my notebook too. And I'm going to put that up. Like, there are certain statements you should be using in your journaling and your petitions that are going to get the message across. You always want to be respectful to your guides, especially someone, you know, as deep as Lilith. But you also want to make it known that you're sure, that you're confident, that you already see this shit coming towards you. You feel me? And when I say shit, I mean good shit, not bad shit. So, yeah, make sure you are documenting what's going on during this process, what work you did. In the guide, there is a space where you can do an astrological case study. And it basically lets you, like, put the date, the name of the moon, what you did, and the results. So, I'm kind of, like, working through that myself. I'm telling y'all, y'all got that Evolved Hustle E-Guide. You need to grab that off the website. Now... Let's see. We are obviously we're retrograding something fist. Uh, we've got six placements retrograding right now to include the node as well as the Chiron all in Aries. When I see this, this is like brand new starts, new beginning, getting your head right, right? Retrograding is the idea that we are being slowed, slowed down to take time to review and refine our path, our plan things that we need to let go, you know. I don't know about y'all, but I did my pull, baby, and my um my my team was like very specific. <laughs> I ain't gonna go too deep into the cut, but they were very, very specific. So if you are cleansed and your mind is clear, you know, obviously you need to book a reading, obviously book a reading. But if you read your own cards, let me tell you something. 
and you cleansed and I feel like the energy like very clear like very they were so fucking clear I was like whoa <laughs> okay then say less <laughs> she like you can get from point a to point b but you must do this this is the thing you must do like I don't know like I just started working with um Lily probably um mm, exclusively about maybe a month ago maybe longer but when I first and I always like I've been telling my clients this like I start working with Lily and Lily don't fucking play either like if you are in a situation where people don't value you they don't fuck with you, you and you like it's she's about honoring yourself baby she would take your ass down through there okay and I feel like now like we have like a clearer partnership because you working with them you know you know what I'm saying and you you want a partnership and I I got that off of the Sabrina the show I found like that was really good because when she was looking for her familiar to help her through the process and they were like you run your familiar and she was like no we're a partnership we work together and I think that's a good way to look at working with your guides too like when people be like you can't just go to your guys like they're some sort of magical genie but if you build a relationship with them and you realize that you're working with them you know what i'm saying because lilith has a mission lilith has something she wants to convey and you have things you need healed and you need done and you need protection and you need covering you feel me um and also this is not when i speak of guides i don't speak to the tone of like worshiping or like that like we worship great spirit you worship god God, you know what I'm saying? However you want to categorize it. My space, you know, we say spirit, great spirit. You might say God, same, same, tomato, tomato. But, you know, and you let your ancestors, your elevated ancestors, um, your spirit team guide you. So just keep that on the docket as you do this, get ready to do this work. So overall, we got quite a few absolutions and we got quite a few oppositions today. What's funny, and I mean, ha ha, like ironic, is the opposition with the moon in Virgo is opposing Neptune in Pisces, which is retrograding at zero degrees. Then you have oppositions with the nodes, which are in Aries. It's opposing the sun in Libra at two degrees, the moon in Virgo at nine degrees. So, you know, that's nine is closing out completion, right? Dunzo. You really get ready to wrap this shit up by five. Then you've got the Mercury in, what is this? Mercury in Libra as well. It's opposing at three degrees. So you're needing to find some alignment between what you know and how you feel and what's right. Um, and I say right, I mean fair and justice. So this is a good time for justice work too. If y'all hadn't got in tune with my Libra blog, it is up on Patreon. So I'll give you a little bit more of a breakdown. But it's also opposing Lilith in Libra at four degrees. So balance is being restored. Stability is being restored. Fairness is being restored. And uh, obviously, you know, that's going to come from a lot of things from your past being worked out. And that's hostile. That's cheap. <laughs> People not want to do that shadow work. Now, you have some squares uh, with Lilith and Libra squaring Mars in Cancer at four degrees. And then you have um, it squaring Chiron. Mars is scaring scaring <laughs> mars is squaring chiron also at six degrees so any type of stability any type of harmony is going to be achieved through release shadow work honoring and yourself and healing right all that that's how it's gonna work why am i not focusing and i did this yesterday too because there are obviously a lot of places where you have trines and you have sextile moments where they say they're working together, they're, they're beside each other, uh, they're harmonious and they're balanced. But when you feel like when we're doing this shadow work team, um, you also need to be seeing like where, you know, I like my dessert first, if you will. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're going to tap into, you know, the squares and the oppositions right now because we doing a lot and a lot's going on in the universal system you know so how do we strategize how do we go to war and you damn sure don't go to war being comfortable you feel me but 
Um, the sun in Libra is squaring Mars and Cancer is six degrees. So there's an imbalance um, right now. So there might be a little bit of, you know, aggy energy. That's why I say better stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Um, the moon in Virgo is squaring Jupiter and Gemini at six degrees right now as well. Um, squaring is like minor conflict a little bit, not being able to relate as much. They're opposite each other almost, but not quite because, you know, you might can work around it. You could transmute that energy and you can transmute all this energy. I was, um, listening to this reader and when she ain't a reader, she like, she practices a certain level, um, she be tapping into like angel magic, all types of stuff. Um, she's a I don't wanna say she's a Chinese, like she's Korean, I feel like. But anyway, she was like she stopped reading tarot because or like reading certain things because she realized that she could do the work, period. I didn't feel like that was a good statement to make because at the end of the day, sometimes when you get those readings, even though you tarot, any oracle, even what we're doing with the transits and the stars right now, it's about the possibility of the thing. So when I say that, I mean that to say that it's telling you what's going on in the current energy and the past energy that's affecting you past, present, future. You have free will. People around you have free will. But when you access these tools, these divination tools, to me, it help you plan. It help me strategize. It help you do shadow work. It help you get done what needs to get done. So you see this shit coming. You feel me? Um, even if you do work, you do witchcraft, you do root work, you do conjure, whatever, voodoo, whatever you do, right? Pray shit. You know what I'm saying? You know what to pray against. You know what to pray for. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what's coming. You know what, what steps you need to kind of sort of take to divert the energy or transmute it or be, tear it down. Whatever needs to happen. So, I don't know. Like, because I have been in situations, you know, even this year where I feel like if I hadn't had my tarot cards, shit could have went completely to the left. I wouldn't have known, you know, I, I wouldn't have paid as much attention to certain things if I didn't have that guidance. And sometimes, you know, with us being practitioners or whatever, myself being a practitioner, I'm afforded the ability to walk in between worlds. So when y'all come to me, shit, even when I go in for myself, I'm able to access spirit, your spirit team, your ancestors, whoever, you know what I'm saying, to get that information that you otherwise might overlook. So this is the same with this astro seek. This is the possibility of the thing. Apply it to your personal chart, your business chart, so you will know how to maneuver throughout the day. But off some, off the rip, what I'm telling you is there is an attack here. From the past, in terms of following your intuition, shadow work, there's an attack on your confidence, your power, you know, because, you know, harmony and balance is being restored. You're getting ready to walk through a portal and these energies don't want this shit to happen. There's a lot of confusion here because there's work to be done. There's karma and dharma, reaping what you sowed, things to be had. Things have to be, you know, checks and balances, if you, this is what you would call it. Yeah. So as you look at the nodes, which are your higher self, your future self, your past self, those are battling right now. Ego, what you know, what's being highlighted, how you feel with the moon, sorting those things out, making commitments, Mercury, you know what I'm saying? Lilith, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that she being handled right now, boy, and people is not comfy, okay? But... That's how I'm going to approach that from now on, you know. Obviously, I can go blow for blow, but I feel like it's just, <laughs> you know, what's good is good. But don't we just enjoy our dessert first, baby? I like my dessert first because, baby, they, they tripping out here. Um, Y'all seen all that shit that was going on, you know, in the Carolinas and Georgia and, ooh, it's a lot. It is a lot, y'all. It is quite a bit. <laughs> quite a bit, honey. Um, nature is like hell to the no, no, no. Energies are not fucking witty. As I shuffle, um, I'm going to tap 
in 4411 on the timestamp. That might be significant to somebody. Yeah, it, I get spirit. Let me know things are being balanced out so new, new, new paths can be created. Mm. And I have seen that somebody said that, and obviously, it's devastating. Like, entire towns have been wiped the fuck out. And it's crazy because, and I can't think right now, I'm gonna start writing shit down, and it's gonna come to me where that Asheville um, name came from i saw that name somewhere be it a movie a book i can't put my finger on it and i was looking and so i'm like where did i see that name but anyway asheville is one of the um places right now that's having issues um in terms of like like i said tennessee like places that's not equipped for flooding that's not equipped for like weather like that baby they having a time like the roads are corroded then you go down to georgia they see side is also messed up from the hurricane then you got the energy of the the plant going like blowing up now that was interesting to me because if y'all know i've been watching preacher on netflix and you know like if you know you know like his town Y'all, that's so fucking crazy. Oh, my God. So, when Preacher them got ready to leave to go find God, right? Because God said, all right. Um, the town, like, remember I told y'all the town, like, went to shit. And then it ended up going to nothing. Like, obviously, um, Conyers, Georgia, is not completely wiped out like in the Preacher movie. But it was the same dynamic of the chemical plant blowing up and causing the town to have issues. So, that's the issue that they're going through right now. Oh, wow, that's crazy. But I see Asheville somewhere. It's going to come to me. I know it is. I There's not a doubt in my mind I saw Asheville somewhere. Yeah, he could. Mm -hmm. I saw it somewhere. I just can't put my finger on it right now. But when I do, I'm going to let y'all know where I saw that shit at way before it happened. Um, What else is going on? And I definitely saw this shit on Preacher about the Georgia shit. I definitely saw that. And Georgia is having a moment, but kids having a moment, everybody's having a moment. And it's crazy because, you know, I resided in Sandy Springs at one point. If you knew me in the Sandy Springs, it's like a dip. They flood all the fucking time. So I can only imagine. I wonder how the, you know, how that's panning out. I ain't even looked at that. But I know they said it was having issues with Buckhead with flooding and stuff. But yeah, y'all, she crazy out here in these streets. That's why, I, like, you know, you might as well keep it player, keep it real in these streets. <laughs> you may as well, because you never know. Like, people lost, like, everything. And I see people saying it's because, like, the, some of the areas was sundown towns. And I don't know if y'all familiar with that concept um, of, like, the towns where like you know if you got a little you know you got a little tan to you you can't be outside you know after the sun go down you know what I'm saying type things um or else you know something bad might happen to you so I seen a lot of people saying that the majority not all of the towns that was having issues like it's like they doing shit they ain't got nothing supposed to be doing spiritually and then it got something to do with like racism and stuff like that so i ain't quite doing no research on it so don't quote me on me what i think i'm just telling y'all with the culture you know part of this is culture talk tribe talk what they saying it's devastating either way because you know obviously <laughs> but and then you got people saying that the the it's like the great flood like areas are just being wiped out it needs to be cleansed it needs to be redone and it's crazy when you look at that shit like i was looking on tiktok and i was like damn like roads like entire towns like fucking gone like gone like they can't even get out gone like crazy shit i was like damn so spiritually i haven't tapped in you know to see what's the tea with the spirits on that you know 
I ain't, I just honestly get really. I knew things were happening, but the full scope of it honestly just crossed my eyes. Like yesterday evening, I I be in a bubble, but I was like, damn, <laughs> like whoa, shit. Prayers to the people, cause what? Cause some people like wasn't prepared, cause that type of shit don't happen in those areas. So it's like, why would I be worried? So I totally get that. Mm, y'all. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Then they talking about how Kamala don't know she. <laughs> they ask her what her plan is. She don't know the plan. Because she ain't got the plan. I said, Lord, have mercy. I really don't be paying attention to that. Oh, and the ports are shut down, y'all. Like, they're on strike because they're not being paid enough. They're not being treated fairly. So, they're saying that um it's going to be an issue with getting supplies. Things are going to get expensive if they don't comply. A lot of people are saying these things. They are ignoring and doing these things to people, to the society on purpose. Because they're trying to dwindle us down. They're trying to make this shit hard. Like, I don't know. It's worth a pull. Like, what the fuck is going on? Because it's a lot going on all at one time, if y'all notice. You feel me? It's a lot going on all at one time. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, let's... All right. Thank you so much, Spirit, for opening the roads for me and allowing me to be able to communicate with our spirit team so we can get guidance and the clarity that we need. Thank you so much for protecting and covering me as I go on this journey. Thank you so much for the gift. I don't abuse the gift. I honor it. I respect it. I love it. Thank you. What do we need to know? Because tea, <laughs> and not like good tea, like tea. Well, depending on the situation. <laughs> Depending on the situation. Let's see what's going on. You know, we're going to do a five-card pull. I was only going to do three, but I also feel like, I don't know. I be guided to do five. But if you're doing like a little short doobly-doo for your new moon, maybe we'll use the first three cards for that. Tell me about the past energy. Five of knobs in the upright. Tell me about the present. Son of Baskets in the reverse. Tell me about the collective energy here. Uh, Daughter of Sticks. So we could be, you could be a fire sign. Our fire sign could be involved here. Tell me about the near future, please. Okay, we got the Mother of Baskets in the upright. And overall, Three of Sticks in the upright. Mm. So, hmm. What you need to let go of for the new moon to get what you want? Um, five and eyes. So, overall, I see here there is a need to let go of any challenges that may have been standing in your way. The fact that you, it's the five and eyes, there is some sort of treachery or exposure. That is being revealed at this particular point, and you're being guided to continue to stay passionate about following your intuition when you make decisions. Yeah, but there is a son of baskets here. Spirit is one you owe. You need to to overcome these challenges that we're going through right now. You need to be very strategic. Stay out your feelings. Don't be immature. Stay passionate. Stay free. Stay independent. Follow your fucking intuition. Take care of yourself. You first. I ain't even gonna hold you. Tell me about the son of all sticks and I mean a son of baskets in reverse. Hmm. So Pacar, we've got the Cancer energy. So there could be a. a water sign masculine more of a much immature energy in your present this could be you or a person around you so take it where it resonates somebody is definitely hiding their feelings about a situation mm. what is this spirit okay then we got the eight of coins in the upright more please the grandchildren so under this moon you need to let go of any 
immaturity, any like past feelings. Like get out. When I see the sun of best kids, I always be thinking, when I see any like get out of immature feelings, get out of like acting out of your feelings, right? And this may be shadow work that you're doing right now. As you're working towards your goals and your plans, you need to be working on believing in yourself, believing that your blessings are coming. Aquarius and Cancer could be significant here. Your blessings are coming. Whatever you're working on is going to be blessed. Whatever. But you need to hold them feelings, baby. You need to keep them bitches tucked back pocket. Yeah, your main focus and goal right now is staying emotionally balanced and really when it comes to making your decisions and when you come to making plans and you need to stay passionate right now. Now, there is a water sign feminine here. There is a more immature energy also in the presence. Oh, yo. Yeah. yeah, somebody is secretly like, yeah. Mm-hmm. If you hiding your feelings about something, maybe you're working towards your goals and your plans. I mean, just stay focused, stay encouraged, but you, you're going to be able to overcome these challenges. Like your hard times are shifting. Any hard times you had from the past, that shit's shifting for you at this moment. Mm. Okay. Let me see what's going on with the guys. What's on the back? Y'all, six of baskets. So yeah, it's time to make peace. It's time to move forward. It's time to grow up. That shit out of the upright, baby. Know what that mean. Let's see what the gods have to say. Yeah. Mm. Some from, somebody from your, your gods are saying, like, somebody from your past may be trying to make amends or resolve some sort of conflict here. Um... But there's a three of pentacles in reverse, and to me, that's indicating a lack of you. You decided not to invest or work with someone from your past. You may be in your head or worried about the situation from the past. You're worried about being able to start over. You're worried about getting this new beginning one. Yeah, this six of baskets, and uh, this is a six of cups. Yeah, you worried about being able to get past this shit. Um, but you are going to overcome this. Yes, Ace of Pentacles in the other right. You're starting over. Your spirit is giving you the gift of, of a restart with this, this um solar eclipse new moon energy. You know, the first of the month, baby, you being given the gift. You worry, but this, this, you are overcoming these challenges because you did release these people. It could be in three or more people. You've released, you know, a group, if you will. You know, we kind of been talking about that for a minute. Tell me about the present energy, please. Yeah. Presently, somebody's trying to stop your plans. Could be by using black magic. Somebody secretly, yeah, son of baskets. Somebody's in their feelings, baby. You with them. Tell me more. Gemini energy. Ooh, king of swords in reverse. Soon as I said that shit. Yeah, you got somebody that's doing black magic. Somebody's being very strategic. Somebody's ooh, doing too fucking much. <sighs> because their options are limited limited or they want to take away all of your options and your opportunity. Um but somebody is in regret though. They bitter. They bitter and they in regret. Whoever this Gemini this is definitely a Gemini masculine. You got a cancer and you got a Gemini and you got an Aquarius in your present energy. This could be you or them. Take it where it resonates. But somebody made some sort of decision here out of immaturity and they in their feelings because they've done some sort of black magic, being cold, being strategic, and now they ass is grace. Meanwhile, you working on your goals and your plans and you getting ready to receive your blessings. Mm. Mm. Tell me about the collective. What I said, a nine of pentacles in the old right there. Who the fuck I ain't talking about? Kobe, <laughs> period, like, they in regret, they bitter, they mad, they sad, they all the things, because you are building up, you went from the Ace of Pentacles to um, the Nine of Pentacles, tell me about the Mother of Baskets in the Upright, please, in the near future, 
So you're still, somebody's still going to try, like, mm, oh, tell me about this seven of wands and the other ring. Mm-hmm. So you're battling with the feelings of returning to this process. You know what I'm saying? Um, but at the end of the day, spirit said you need to make the decision to move on. Maybe you keep on returning to these emotions and these feelings because you something unfair happened to you. Justice in reverse, Libra. Yeah, something these people, these three individuals, uh, three of cups in reverse to the justice in reverse, you know, these people did something malicious they did something unjustified to you you know and that's a battle that you're having to fight right now internally knowing what they've done you may keep you know you keep returning to these thoughts these emotions and these feelings about how you were treated unfairly but spirit wants you to remain focused and you know, on your vision, you know, Queen of Wands in the upright could be a water sign feminine as well as a fire sign feminine that I am speaking with. But this is your near future. So you're facing some sort of battle, but you know, you're fighting, you know, you ain't giving the fuck up, you know. And there was something unjustified done here. Yes, Spirit is saying you keep returning to these moments and your feelings, but you need to move on. The chariot, cancer energy. This could be a mother figure. Definitely, because we got the cancer. We got two moms, the queen and the mother of baskets. Tell me about the overall energy. Knight of Swords. Hmm. What's this Knight of Swords? What's that, Spirit? Page of Swans in reverse. Somebody, you're looking ahead, but you've got the night, you've got a page. Ooh. That are now being left out in the cold. Five of Pentacles. So, this Knight of Swords, somebody made a decision to do something very reckless and immature. Um, to try to stop you from moving on. And now they've been left out in the cold. They, they, they're, they're down bad. Yeah. Spirit is saying page of swords in reverse. Who is this? Ooh. The empress in reverse. Somebody wasn't thinking. Somebody, they, they're not talking or they weren't thinking. They said something or made some sort of plan without thinking with the empress in reverse. Uh, this is the king of pentacles here. They thought that they were going to be able to have some sort of wealth, some sort of abundance. So they they were lied to by this empress in reverse. They were focused on building, focused on growth. And this person is a king of wands. So this could be a earth sign masculine or fire sign masculine. Or feminine, heavy, or masculine, take it where it resonates. But this particular person, yeah, they, they, they thought they had the plan. They thought they had the idea. And now they're battling. They're fighting right now. Five of Wands in the upright. They're fighting right now. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, higher fun energy towards. Maybe they're battling spirit, battling their morals, battling themselves. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, because now their their goals and their these plans that they had, Knight of Pentacles in reverse, have been slowed down. This person's burden, Ten of Wands in the upright. Yeah, this person's burden. Mm-hmm. But you don't move the fuck on. Yeah, somebody wanted to try to battle you. Somebody kept messing with you, trying to get you to not be able to move on you know and they they were working against you unfairly so justice was in reverse and that's what you were dealing with so you've got someone that you know you need to stay focused on moving forward um the collective energy with the daughter of sticks and the um nine of pentacles yeah it's knight of cups you know somebody yeah, be stay focused on this moment. Yeah, this person is gonna still try to come in, um, and offer you some sort of apology after a betrayal. 
because they are basically going the fuck through it. So you got people that are in that energy. Yeah, and you've been freed from this person. The uh, what is this? Eight of Swords in the reverse. You've been freed. I got a two for one. Um, I got a seven, seven of Pentacles, two of four of ones. You've been freed from this portrayal from this person. Um, this person, you know, now you you're working on your foundation. You're working on your stability. Yes, spirit saying stay free from this person. Continue to move on from these people. Let's see what the oracle is talking about, y'all. Yeah, you're working on your stability. You working on. You know, finding harmony, foundation. You not focused on that shit. Yeah, spirit says stay strong, strength. Let's see with the oracles. So you need to continue to believe in yourself. Believe that you're gonna overcome these challenges from your past. Tell me about the present. Spirit saying trust the process. Trust what you know. Um, trust this information that you've been given about these individuals. Um, somebody was definitely planning something secretly. They were doing so out of emotion. Um, they were doing so out of just greed, um, against you. Meanwhile, you all went in up for like, you know, the, the Jeffersons, like fucking George and Weezy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Spirit wants you to trust the process, trust what you know. There are a lot of secrets being had here. Yeah, stay determined. That's why I say trust the process. So that's why uh, Pisces could be significant. Tell me more about the collective energy. Adaption. Um, yeah, you just going to have to adapt, you know. When they bob, you weave. When they zig, you fucking zag. You know, adapt to the current climate, adapt to the things that are going on around you right now. Um, there was this very interesting part of American Horror Story where Misty Day could have been the fucking supreme. But when she did the seven wonders or whatever, when she performed them hoes, her personal hell was not being able to allow like the frog to die. You know, she wouldn't let the frog die. She wouldn't respect the natural order of things. And I feel like that's very, like, important for someone to know. She wouldn't respect the natural order. Like, she kept trying to bring the frog back. But had she just released the idea that things, all things have to end. Nothing was the same. Everything has to change. You know what I'm saying? If she had to just let that shit go, she would have been the fucking supreme. Just on natural, just raw talent. But she couldn't let the natural cycle of things occur and i feel like that's the message for somebody near future freedom in reverse um somebody is trapped because they need to heal somebody's not going to experience freedom until they heal mm -hmm. somebody's not going to experience freedom until they heal yep tell me more yeah, Spirit says there's work to be done. Um, somebody was working on making you lose out victory in reverse um, so that you wouldn't grow. Could have been this Queen of Wands. Um, this person is going to try to come into your energy and you really need to mind what you've got going on energetically. Yeah, stay in high energy right now. Keep your frequency high. Yeah. Somebody's working very hard to make sure you don't have this victory. They do not want you to grow. So, yeah, keep your energy high right now. Tell me about the overall. Yeah, wisdom. Wisdom is going to be key. Confidence on the back of the deck is going to be key. You, um, There are some things that are from the past. Somebody tried to throw you off balance. Could have been a partnership or a relationship. So, there's a breakup that was... The Gemini possibly could be significant with the lovers that was throwing you off balance. Um, you seem to have decided to... Somebody's lost this fight. Mm. 
could be a high priestess in reverse Taurus energy. Someone did not get their wish fulfillment. They did not get this cup of love. Now, we've got the Nine of Cups. Yeah, you are going to get some sort of wish fulfillment with um, in your life. Um, there is going to be some healing here because you're the star. You believed in yourself and you took the action to become the Queen of Pentacles here. And, you know, after this trauma, this heartbreak, um, someone is deeply into their thoughts about this again maybe that's what you're thinking because this was possibly revealed to you over a period of time could have been a virgo involved too oh a maze but spirit saying make peace with the past right now and focus on recovery and healing we got the five of baskets to the six of baskets you already know let me do one more yeah seven of sticks so you are going to have to overcome some things. You are going to have to have strength because you do have um, your family, toxic ten of baskets working against you, clouding your judgment um, in regards to you moving on um, because you, you're trying to free yourself. And they see that you are the empress and you're avoiding some sort of tower. Ooh, love to see it. So this is going to take strength. This is going to take determination, believing in yourself and adapting to the change you feel me like adapt shift okay but that's the message y'all i might get down more spiritually what's going on with the climate you know the areas the phenomena or whatever um a little later on live so make sure y'all turn on y'all notifications okay if you need an october forecast or any type of spiritual service um definitely click the link in my bio i do have available slots i appreciate y'all so much for continuing to engage and follow you know my content this is definitely a journey for all of us not just me you know i other than that that's all i gotta say <laughs> But I love y'all and um, we'll chat soon, okay? Bye.